Hi there, today I'm going to be talking about um, the world energy resources. In particular, I'm focusing on how energy resources are used today. So that means, although I'm going to mention renewable resources, I'm going to really, really focusing on um, the non-renewable resources which are still widely used across planet Earth today, thinking about why they're used, how they're formed, and some of the issues related with this choice that the world is making. Just to emphasize this point here, if we think about energy supplies in Britain. Okay. Now, what we can see here by looking at this pie chart is that coal, nuclear, oil and natural gas usage makes up the majority of uh, energy supplies in the United Kingdom today with a very small uh, percentage of hydroelectric which could be considered a renewable source of energy. Just to clarify that distinction here, uh, renewable forms of energy are forms of energy which are not being used up in any way. Examples, okay, I'll go back, and in return, non-renewable forms of energy are examples of energy resources which are being used up. So I've got some examples here. Non-renewable, I've got coal, oil, and natural gas. We can also include nuclear there, although there's a bit more of a blurring if we look at that in a little bit more detail for renewable and this is something we're going to go into much more detail later on in the course we've got wind solar wave tidal hydroelectric biomass and geothermal these are all methods of renewable forms of energy resources now as i said our focus today is actually going to be on the non-renewable types of energy in particular those which we release energy through combustion so that's coal oil and natural gas so oil coal and natural gas are all examples of what's known as fossil fuels and it basically is terminology given them because they're formed from biological deposits formed over millions of years ago and because they're formed over millions of years ago and they're not naturally being uh, replaced it means this there's only a finite amount so these things can uh, once they're burnt and consumed there's no they can be no way they can be regenerated so that's why they're known as non-renewable energy sources so let's look at uh, some of these in a little bit coal formation begins about 300 million years ago where we have plants uh, photosynthesizing and therefore storing the sun's energy within themselves. Life goes on quite happily, uh, the seasons continue and then eventually these plants get knocked down and the dead plants will often fall into uh, swampy water. Now this swampy water sets up the perfect situation where the situation involving the mud stopping any bacteria getting to these plants and so causing them not to rot away. Over millions of years further and further layers of mud and various debris build up on top of these layers of unrotting plants. Now as these further and further layers uh, build up that means greater greater pressure is built up on these areas and that causes the mud to turn into rock and the plants to turn into coal so that's the process of coal formation and then millions of years later uh, people will go down and mine this coal as a useful energy resource so that's coal formation uh, oil formation I guess technically also starts off with the Sun uh, what we have Oil is also biologically based in its origins, but in this case it comes from tiny microorganisms which are living under the sea. However, these tiny microorganisms are also originally heavily reliant on energy from plants. So this is uh, seaweed in this case, and these plants convert energy directly from the sun through photosynthesis, and that energy is then um, transferred into these small creatures living under the sea. Now eventually these small creatures uh, come to the end of their lives, they die and they fall to the bottom of the sea. 
Now, if we have the right scenario, what happens is that uh, if the conditions are right, they don't rot away, and that means that uh, slowly but surely, layers of sun, uh, sand and mud will build up on top of them. As this continues over a long period of time, what happens is the pressure and also the high temperature uh, builds up and causes the uh, particles to be transformed into oil and some particles and the mud to be transformed into uh, stone. Now what happens with this oil quite often is that um, it tends to get squeezed up through certain forms of rock and then get stuck below uh, non-porous forms of rock causing huge swathes to build up and then it can be accessed in this case we see an oil rig um, digging under the ocean and then under the ground to try and extract oil from below one of these porous non-porous layers of rock so that's oil formation these fossil fuels, what are the pros and cons? Okay, so let's think about these advantages. Um, at the moment, they're still readily available. There's uh, not presently a shortage of fossil fuels. Um, they're easily transported. Okay, uh, Oil and gas can be transported through pipes. Uh, coal can be transported uh, on the backs of trains or on ships. And it's quite easy to transport these things around. Uh, therefore, they're relatively cheap. Uh, the cost of oil extraction, um, or I guess uh, dependent on the amount of money that you can make from uh, oil extraction, means that more recently we've seen some slightly more challenging methods of extracting gases, fracking being an example, and oil by removing the oil from uh, shale, as is found in parts of Canada. But um, even though these more expensive methods uh, are out there and there's also quite cheap methods of extracting these uh, fuels in some locations around the planet Earth. Uh, disadvantages, they're non-renewable which means that uh, they're not being replaced. Uh, the, one of the outcomes is the production of or release of carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide through the burning process, the combustion process and this can lead to acid rain uh, the greenhouse effect through the release of carbon dioxide. Uh, some of the advantages also that we can have refineries out of town, which is we can really locate exactly where we want these refineries to be taking place. Uh, disadvantages, um, there's some boundary issues. So the location of oil or gas or coal can have an impact on international relationships not just non-renewable but they're also running out so natural gas we've got potentially 25 to 30 years remaining on what we know at the moment there are more fines taking place so this may be extended oil about 75 years again based on numbers of this moment in time although there's new oil fines taking place all the time coal maybe about 300 years and nuclear could last for thousands of years but still will eventually run out nevertheless they're all finite levels. Now, why do we use these uh, fuels? Well, we think about because we can, um, they're quite useful. In fact, they release quite a lot of energy. Some of the things for thinking about, uh, or one of the features for thinking about the quality of a fuel is something known as the energy density. Now, the energy density is the amount of energy released per. Um, the IB is looking for the amount of kilojoules per kilogram of fuel burnt in the first place. Now, there's a whole set of different features which you can use to consider if a fuel is effective or not. Um, if you are thinking about a fuel which is a, a liquid or gas needed to be transported, you might be considering about the size rather than the mass. Um, you might be in the future be considering how much carbon dioxide is released as a certain amount is 